Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Brotherhood Outdoors YouTube channel. Kind of having fun filming for this channel again. It's not something I've done in a while, so I've just kind of in the recent couple months here tried to post a few more videos. And I just, I just really enjoy it. I really enjoy doing this stuff. Um, and I just really enjoy, you know, being out in the woods, filming this kind of stuff, trying to help other people see that there are other ways to manage your property and do other stuff. And, you know, I'm not a wildlife biologist. I don't like to study all this crazy stuff. I just kind of do what I observe works better for me compared to what I was doing. And as I learn new things that I think work better, I will educate you on my mistakes and trial and error and all that stuff as I go. So just keep that in mind. Um, I've only been doing, you know, management stuff pretty much since I was a kid up until now and I'm only 21 years old but I've been doing this stuff and learning and going and trying to figure out what works what doesn't stuff like that and so just take it for what it is but we're in a clover plot here today one of our new clover plots and it's almost midday not like dead middle of the day but it's about noon it's about uh, 12 o'clock here this plot gets probably its most lighting from I want to say two o'clock to five o'clock is probably like the most light that it gets like it's got lighting in here but it's not like tons it's not like oh wow tons of sunlight you know it's, a, it's still a little bit shaded out but what we're gonna do today is talk about how to create light back in the woods in the most successful way possible and a lot of people don't really try to grow clover back in the timber like in small plots like this just because it's kind of hard to get lighting it's really hard to grow clover without at least like at least six to ten hours of light a day just because you know even for shade tolerant species like white clover that i know it still does require a lot of sunlight compared to like a brassica turnip. They could get away with a little bit less and they can be a little less picky with soil and all that other stuff and you know do fine. Clover is a little bit different and you know at a minimum it requires more sunlight. So you know we're going to work on that today and I'm going to show you what I do to get more sunlight on my plots. This one you know now that everything's leafed up you know when I prepped these plots originally it was the dead of winter there was nothing growing in here like in terms of leaves on trees or anything so it was kind of hard to judge like perfectly you know what we're gonna have to cut and what we are not and now that everything is greened up I can see where the leaves are gonna be a problem and we're gonna try to do what we need to to make sure this plot gets plenty of sunlight in its early stages right now this plot is well rooted and it's looking good you can see all the clover just just pushing up through the ground here it's looking awesome but if we don't get the sunlight addressed, this could go to nothing very quickly because, you know, this was starting to sprout up a couple of weeks ago when there wasn't much leaves on the trees. And this was getting 100% sunlight, you know, pretty much all day other than a little bit of the shadows from the trees. Now we've got leaves everywhere. So if this isn't addressed right away, um, this might not go over so well. So you can see all the shade in here right now. And you don't want it to be like, you know just direct sunlight all day morning sun up to sundown um, that's not going to be a bad thing for it but it's not needed on this species of clover but we are going to try to improve it just a little bit more and i'm going to show you how i do that i also brought a small cage that was actually used for a rabbit cage that i was making but i did not end up wanting to finish it just because i figured you know we'll just buy one um so what i'm actually going to use this for though is to cover up a portion of my clover plot and then hopefully we can see you know if not this one there's another one that i think probably gets a little bit more browse pressure um, but put a cage over it in a spot of it um, so we can kind of see you know how much browse pressure these plots are really getting in the early stages so we can kind of calibrate you know the quality of the clover and you know how it's doing based on that because i don't want to have no cage out here and then my clover is staying short and i'm just like beating myself up over how it's not doing good i didn't do a good job and then really it's just because the deer are mowing it down because we have a lot of deer here i'm surprised it's made it this far with how many deer we have in here it's probably only because there's so much other vegetation to eat you know they don't have to just rely on this but let's get to cutting and show you what we do now there's a couple of tools that i use one of those is a habitat hook that helps pull things down without having to strain your back and your arms pulling things down and everything else. And then I also use a small Black & Decker battery powered 20 volt chainsaw. And everybody that I know that has not used one of these rips on it, but I'm telling you what, it's super lightweight, it takes a battery, I don't have to carry fuel and oil out here, and it's super low maintenance and I can run this on a 6 amp hour battery for a few hours straight and not have any issues and it's it works plenty fine for most of the small management stuff that I'm doing. Now, if I was like obviously dropping trees for a living, like big, big trees, 
probably wouldn't buy this, but you know, for what I do, it, it makes total sense and it's very easy to use climbing up and out of tree stands. I can hook this on a belt, climb up, you know, and then work around in the tree stand. I don't have to like try to start up the chainsaw or if it cuts out, restart it, you know, choke it. What I just pull the trigger and it cuts. And I've also got a Black & Decker battery powered trimmer. This thing works awesome for applications where this just is a little bit obnoxious. This thing can just trim stuff up super fast if you're trying to trim up limbs around your food plots and only keep a couple licking branches. Like I'll show you an example of what I do to make it, you know, not take up a bunch of sunlight in a plot that's so small like this, but you know, a fast way to trim stuff up. Let me show you. For example, this right here, I want a licking branch here. There's a stand, you know, 10 yards over here, but I don't want this many branches on it. Let me show you what I do. super quick work of getting rid of the shade that you don't need. That's all I need here. I just want this right here. That's all I want. I want this here to make scrapes under. I don't need anything else in here other than this one and maybe one other on the end and that's it. So now we're gonna hinge our trees out of the way for more sunlight. And that is a small example of what I do and how I use hinge cutting to grow clover food plots much more effectively. Of course, this is the west side of the food plot. Everything over here is to the west. As you can see, this opened up a bunch more sunlight and these trees are still gonna live and you don't need to pull them all the way to the ground. You know, it's suggested you don't leave these trees hanging up like this, but there's tons of cambium layer attached to those trees, probably a third uh, still attached. And as long as these trees are leaned over out of the way, to bring in a little bit more sunlight, that's all I need them to do um, for a food plot application because I don't really want the deer bedding under here. It's not really the goal anyhow. So we're gonna do this to a couple of more trees down along this edge and then that's pretty much gonna be all we do for this location and that's all we're gonna need. So that's all we're gonna be doing in this plot here. You can see I got uh, four trees hinge cut right here. There's one, two, three, four, just a couple small ones, then five, six, two more down here. Um, you can see the clover's coming up really, really nice. There's a lot of grass in here competing, but for the most part, the clover's doing very, very good. Very happy with how it's turning out. I don't think we're gonna have to do much more cutting in here. Now, this is the west side of the plot over here. And this is the south side of the plot, but the south side of the plot's not really taking up much light. So once that sun right here gets up about here, about one or two o'clock, from about one or two until about five, you know, this plot is gonna get tons of light. And in the morning still, you know, it still gets some light. You can see the sunlight peeking through this whole half gets it, you know, early on in the day. And then in the later half of the day, this plot gets most of the sunlight. So, you know, it kind of goes back and forth, but it's doing very, very well. I feel like uh, if it wasn't getting the sunlight that it needed, it wouldn't have made it this far since being planted a few weeks back. I mean, it's, it's growing up real good. You can see some of the clover in here has actually got some real big leaves on it already and uh, greening up very, very, very nicely. And guys, keep in mind, this is a brand new stand of clover. It hasn't been planted here previously and there's no fertilizer in here, there's no liming, there's, I didn't even do a soil test, I didn't do any of that stuff. And there's gonna be guys that make videos and they promote all this other stuff that they're sponsored by, you know, to, you gotta use this product, you gotta use this product. And you know, some of that stuff really does make a big difference. But I'm doing it the simplest, most affordable way possible. Yes, you can do fertilizing all that stuff and you might be able to get an extra couple years out of it and it does make a difference, you know, with good products. But, you know, for what I do, this has worked totally fine. And I've got some clover over at my dad's property that I planted three years ago. No fertilizer, no lime. 
no no soil test no nothing and it is thick and lush it's probably 14 inches tall right now and it's not even june yet there's hardly any grass or weeds in it because the clover after the first year you know the second year it came up and i mowed it off mid to late spring it, i mean it just took off so fast that it shaded out the weeds in the grass and it, it just didn't even stand a chance you know once it was established um hopefully we get the same results here plot number two habitat hook on the saw this clover plot is growing exceptionally well it's doing amazing but i'm gonna set this up down and show you guys the the downfall of this plot so this plot is tucked back way back in the timber here and there was really not much sunlight here whatsoever this was an old logging road that i worked i tilled um, i prepped it in terms of just tilling and moving branches and leaves and debris getting, getting it out but again no soil tests no fertilizer no liming no nothing look at the clover shooting up in this place it is doing spectacular yes there's grass yes there's some weeds but the clover is doing great and i think that once it gets you know the white flowers on it and it uh, is ready to be mowed off again at least the way i've done it then it usually is well rooted enough to take out pretty much most of the grass and weeds at least the the bigger uh, leafy weeds shade them out real quick and then they just can't survive once they're mowed off and the clover shades out their uh, stems they just they're they're dead so um that's what i've done but of course take it for what it is but we're gonna work on clearing out some more of the small trees hinging out any of these small trees that have leaves shading out the plot like you can see this little tree here is taking up a lot of sunlight casting a shadow right here so we're going to remove that tree by hinging it over kind of like these here i'm going to do another video on talking about what happens to a hinge cut tree after you cut it and come back to it and check out the progress of it and its survival uh, that's for another video though but you can see the clover is doing it's doing very well in here for it being its first little first little shot at establishing it's it's doing great we're going to hinge cut all the small trees that are taking up sunlight casting shadows in here again this plot it does get light but it doesn't get like tons of light so we want to try to change that to make sure the plot um, entirely has plenty of sunlight to survive because i just don't want to have you know all the work put into this and then it dies off because it doesn't get the sunlight it needs and this is a plot that i put my uh cage on to try to see if the browse pressure is hitting it pretty good you know from the deer maybe they're not hitting it at all yet uh but if they are i want to know so i can determine whether my results are good or not based on also factoring in the fact that the deer are eating it and here's the back portion of the plot here it's doing really really good lots of lots of tracks in it though i mean a lot of a lot of deer tracks in it i mean they're they're definitely in here i don't know if they're eating it or not yet but they're they're definitely they're definitely walking around in it if they're not eating it they're just going for a, a stroll through it that's for sure there's one of our new stand locations i'm super excited about i think it's going to be a super killer setup we've got a buddy stand with a lock on on the side of it overlooking the creek bed and i think we're going to have a super super successful season coming up i mean last year <laughs> We shot five does on this place, and that was our first season hunting here. And we, and we didn't even hunt it the whole season. We didn't get to hunt pretty much the first month of the season because we didn't buy the property until season had already been well started. First morning out here hunting, I filled both my doe tags. First morning, and the two does that I shot were less than 10 minutes apart. I mean, they were big does, uh, not not little fawns. I mean, they were they were big does. Those videos are also filmed and on this channel. <music> We opened up a little bit more sunlight. We cut back a few of these small maples here. A few more over there, a couple behind. Now I can't cut too much more back out here with me today because like, for example, that half the plot, the biggest shading issue right there is a 200 year old white oak. That'll make it kind of hard to cut with a 10 inch blade on a battery powered chainsaw. This is pretty much what I do to try to get sunlight to these wooded plots. Now you guys have to keep in mind, it's almost midday here it's still not like real late in the day so you know right like, like i said around one or two is when most of this plot will get sunlight because of course in these plots straight up and down is the most available lighting 
and that's pretty much how it is along all these types of food plots. And I just looked it up and apparently white clover, Ladina clover can survive just fine on four to six hours of sunlight a day. And this plot gets, it definitely gets at least that throughout the span of a day. So I'm not too worried about the sunlight issue in this plot for the most part. I've got, if you look behind me, I've got so many small trees cut back to try to allow sunlight in. And once that sun hits, you know, its peak for the day, this will be in direct sunlight for a few hours straight and then it'll be in a little bit of sunlight throughout the afternoon as it's starting to you know, set. So this plot should be good to go other than coming back to mower once the flowers start to grow up on top of here. That's pretty much going to be it. That's going to be it on this video on how I grow clover plots in, you know, back in the timber and more shaded areas. You do have to cut back some stuff, but it can be done in strips like this in areas that, you know, are seemingly low sunlight. As long as they can get four to six hours of sunlight, preferably six plus, you're fine. And at least that's for the white clover species up north where I'm at in Indiana you know, this kind of stuff, you can do this kind of stuff just fine. But of course it varies state to state and, you know, based on your climate, soil type and all that other stuff. Works fine for where we're at, but you know, that's just, uh, that's just what I do for where I'm at here in the Midwest. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I appreciate you guys leaving the likes on the videos, leaving your comments, that stuff helps a ton. The more likes and comments you guys leave, the more YouTube will suggest these videos to other people to help the channel grow. And that is of course, what we want here so thank you guys so much be sure and stay on the lookout for our deer hunt giveaway coming up soon we're hoping 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 to have it launched by june 1st and we're going to be giving away a deer hunt travel included lodging included food included all that stuff plus the license included and we're giving away a crossbow with the hunt that way you get to have a prize regardless whether you get a deer or not you get the experience and you get something to take home it'll just be awesome so stay tuned for that that's coming up real soon for entry for you guys to be able to get in on that and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video peace